You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Monday, September 30th. The fall weather heard us talking about it. it <laughs> and now it's going to be like, like 90. 95 tomorrow yes. with a heat index over 100. So Texas people. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> last day of September. Tomorrow begins October. Apparently summer October. <laughs> Summertober? October. 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 <laughs> Works either way. If it feels like fall in August or if it feels like summer in October, it's October. October. Uh, it's Monday. That means it's Mental Health Monday. We'll yes. check in with Deaconess Heidi Gaiman and an upcoming Hymn Writers and Translators Summit. Uh, no, not Summit. Conference. Yeah. Uh, an event. An event. <laughs> a thing that's happening about hymns. Happy Monday. <laughs> Symposium. That's the word I was looking for. Symposium. Um <laughs> Too many summits in my brain here. So many uh, things so happening. That's coming up in the second half. We'll we'll talk with uh, Dr. John Beaker about that in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University Wisconsin for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Join- uncommon. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Off, Live man. uncommon. <laughs> Joining us this morning, Deaconess Heidi Gaiman uh, for Mental Health Monday, author of The Mighty and the Mysterious. Good morning, Heidi. Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm like half awake this morning. So here we go. Well, welcome to the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm still with my fall voice, my autumn voice, voice here. Yeah. Yes. So it uh, sounds delightful. Now, we've been talking about uh, when or how to ask for help and, and, and just in general asking for help. This week, we're going to dig into who to ask for help. Mm-hmm. Um who do we ask for help when we when we're talking about mental health and well being? Uh, who do yeah. we ask for help? Um, start with let's start with professional or layperson. Uh, who do we go to? Yeah, I think this is one of the questions I get the very most from people is who to ask. And one thing I would say is because the act of asking for help is so difficult for people, like. I just encourage people first ask people you care about, you know, ask the people that you love for help first, because it will be easier to seek professional help when you have that support behind you. Um, And so, I mean, anyone I talk to from middle schoolers through adults and, you know, elderly individuals, like talk to the people you love first, because I find that the act of getting professional help is so difficult, whether that's medical um, or um, like therapeutic help or uh, financial help, any of that is so hard that you need people like cheerleading you on. And you do kind of need some people's ideas, some referrals and references and resources. And so I just think it's a really good practice to ask a person first, but don't stop there is I think the trick, you know, so often we ask a friend about our, you know, advice for our marriages or for friendship or something. um, And then we end up really disappointed with what we receive (laughs) because they're not trained, you know, or we go to our pastors, which is such a good thing. Like, do it, do it, go to your pastor. Um, But then, you know, we stop there um, and their their purpose is, you know, spiritual guidance. Their purpose is bringing us the word um, and the sacraments as good gifts. And so like they want us to seek professional help in other areas for the thing that isn't what they do, you know, for counseling and, um, you know, grief therapy, whatever you might need. And so start with the people you know, but know that their place is, you know, really friendship, maybe a little bit of wisdom from their own experiences, but it's good for Um, especially mental health. Um, But I think we could, you know, you're not going to ask your best friend what you do about, you know, your heart attack. Like, no, you don't do that. So, (laughs) so consider moving on to like professional help. And you also, I can't stress this enough, like may not get a response the first time. Unfortunately, um, just like the frustration of trying to call and make appointments for things like MRIs or for like, you know, kind of massive medical tests, um, counseling could be the same. And so you, have to have a little bit of tenacity in finding the right fit for you for professional help. Um, I think we're moving into a generation where you know that you can switch doctors if you need to, you know, Mm -hmm. right, Andy? Has anybody, Andy or Sarah, have you guys ever switched doctors? (laughs) Oh, yes. You have the freedom, right? Never. You have the freedom to do that. We used to live in a culture where you couldn't, we really felt like you couldn't do that. And we know that's Mm -hmm. not true anymore. Um, Get second opinions. Uh, Go see someone else if you hear something that you're like, I don't don't think so, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, it, it can help also to talk to your friends or family first before you talk 
talk to a professional just to kind of maybe hash out how you actually are going to talk to a professional too because mm-hmm. sometimes you, you know what you're feeling but it's hard to put it into words um, and, mm-hmm. and having a conversation with someone who um, who loves you um, and, and wants the best for you um, that can help uh, just kind of help put put your feelings into words and, and put what, what you're experiencing um, into a conversation that, that you can then take to a, a professional um, so when you when you actually go to a professional you, you can you can clearly lay out um, what what you need and, and what what you're experiencing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's really wise. Yeah, personal experience. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so when we go to a professional, we're finding somebody. Um, does it matter whether they have a Christian worldview or not? Oh, that's such a good question. <laughs> and you know, I think one thing that's helpful is in the Camp View archives, we do have an, an entire like I think a kind of full length episode, mm-hmm. if you will, on um, what kind of professional to seek. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would just reference, I don't know if you guys can put it in like show notes and things like that, but yeah. that might be a really helpful resource for people. Um, and that's with Dr. David Fleming. And I know, and myself, and I learned so much from that episode mm-hmm. and I constantly send it to people who are asking this question. Um, but one thing I think think is important to remember is that we want a word-centered life. And by word-centered, I mean the Bible. You know, we want a Bible-driven worldview. And so anything we take in, that's our lens. That does not mean that everyone we seek needs that lens also. It just means that number one, we need to engage our filter at all times. So in the way that you get on Facebook and don't Um, just like read everything everybody says and believe it, right? You don't do that. It's the same thing when you talk to a friend, when you seek advice and wisdom, and the same thing when you talk to a professional. Like we have a filter and we can use it. Um, I really struggle with um, when people don't understand the purpose of therapy, because sometimes we think that therapy is, I need someone to have the exact same opinions I do so that they can confirm those opinions. Like that's Mm -hmm. actually like the reverse of when therapy is really useful. It is helpful to have someone who understands where you're coming from. And so I don't want to like make that a small thing. However, um, the purpose of therapy is to help you live in your beliefs and walk in them. And so that doesn't mean that that therapist needs to have my beliefs because if I'm hearing that therapist's belief, that's not good therapy. That's terrible therapy, in fact. Their job is to help me live in my beliefs. And so while it is good, you know, if you, I had an LCMS counselor when I was growing up as a a youth and it was amazing. And she's had a huge impact on my life. And I know she's out there somewhere, Theresa, she was pretty amazing. (laughs) Um, And so I think that that can be a really amazing relationship. But I've also had a Jewish therapist that had a completely different worldview than I did. But I didn't know he was Jewish until I was done with therapy because that's not his job to tell me. (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. not what therapy looks like. And so kind of understanding, is it word-centered? Understanding where their vantage point is, but then understanding, um, you know, the the entire purpose of therapy is not to to share a shared belief. Um, That's friendship. Mm -hmm. Other characteristics you're looking for in a in a professional to help you, um, what, well, a professional or even a lay person as well, um, who you're going to ask. Yeah, I think the most important thing is compassion and a safe space. You know, when I'm going to share um, my struggles, I need to feel absolutely safe in sharing it. Help is hard. I need to know that it's going to be received in a way where I can. Um, know that I'll be loved and forgiven and cared for after the fact, and people are going to follow through. Um, And so that level of compassion, you also need truth. I mean, I don't want to see a friend or a professional that's just going to feed me like ideas that are unhealthy. Um, If I'm struggling with my marriage, I certainly don't want to see someone who's like, oh, just give up. Who cares? You know, he's (laughs) a jerk. Like that's terrible. That's not good help at Mm -hmm. all. Um, That's placating. And there's this, this idea, I keep seeing the terminology, which is really helpful that we have terminology for it now, but we call it spiritual bypassing, like where people just give you a platitude. And this was a huge subject of the national LCMS national youth gathering this year. But that idea where someone's just like, you know, do not be anxious. And like, yes, please quote scripture to me, but, but make it, 
um, applicable to like my holistic health instead of just throwing out something that's kind of easy. Um, and so someone who's really going to show up, I think is really important and help because help seeking isn't a 30 second ordeal. It's, you know, something that happens over time and multiple meetings, not just like one question asked and answered often. What about, do they need to be local or in person with the, the increase of uh, technology mm-hmm. and um, a- accessibility online? Is that, does that matter? Yeah, I, I think that uh, telehealth has its place. I mean, I practice telehealth a lot, so I'm a big fan. Um, but in person does also have its place. And um, that's one reason we created the LCMS dot org backslash wellness um, worker wellness website was so that people could begin to start sorting through some resources and many resources are national you know shepherds canyon grace place wellness um, doxology a lot of resources we have are nationally based but they kind of come to you or they have like regions of work um, and that's really helpful those have their place Um, there's also a huge place in your life for you know the counselor down the street that you can see weekly or bi-weekly that is so important to engage in your local community because they know your context best and so like if i need some kind of financial help you know i it should not be shameful for church workers to use uh, Medicaid or to use food stamps even. Now, I know that we want our congregations to care for our workers, but there are going to be situations where we need that kind of help for a season at least. And so those uh, places and resources locally are really, really important for getting our needs met. And the same is true for counseling. You know, I'm not going to be able to get... um, on the worker wellness website and find a counselor that's in, you know, um, I don't know, Minneapolis, Minnesota or something like I need to go into my local resources. Probably my district website is a really good resource. Um, and then work from there, look at my town, Google and Google what you need. Like one thing I said in a video recently was to Google, for instance, um, autism spectrum, and then Google your town's name. And that Hmm. will give you like local experts, and kind of dial it down instead of just like counselor Norfolk, Nebraska, you know, that, (laughs) that gets overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I do always offer myself like as the worker wellness, mental health advocate contractor for the Lutheran church, Missouri Ascendant, I am happy to help, you know, so there's the worker wellness email. Um, I think it's like an email address, like worker wellness at LCMS.org. <laughs> I can't think of things like that. Um, but, you know, feel free to contact the Church Information Center, too, and they'll send you to someone who can help. Uh, Concordia Plans, they have people who can help you kind of sort through that, too. And don't forget EAPs, especially mm-hmm. workers and people who don't work in church work that are LCMS members. Like a lot of employment has EAPs, employee assistant programs that offer you six usually free visits to a counselor and they'll give you a list of local people call and ask questions be like hey who are you what's your kind of therapeutic practice um and that's probably for another mental health monday but (laughs) deacon is heidi gaiman uh thank you so much for joining us for mental health monday thanks coming up in just a little bit We'll take a look at the Hymn Writers and Translators Symposium coming up right around the corner. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Hello.